Starship, over 50 meters tall, designed to change how humanity lands on the moon, might touch down without traditional landing legs at all. SpaceX claims it can land right on the skirt, eliminating tons of heavy hardware and echoing the same radical thinking that led them to catch boosters with a tower back on Earth. But recent lunar missions have ended in disaster after tipping or sliding across the surface, and Starship's immense scale means any small drift could turn triumph into catastrophe. If SpaceX gets this right before China does, it could redefine lunar landings forever. But is landing a skyscraper-sized rocket on the moon without legs genius or a shortcut doomed to fail? Here's why the answer could reshape everything we know about going back to the moon. Weight is the enemy of every lunar mission, and nowhere is that more obvious than in the debate over Starship's landing legs. Every kilogram that goes into hardware like legs is a kilogram that can't be used for fuel, cargo, or life support. For a vehicle as massive as Starship, topping 100 metric tons empty, legs big enough to keep it upright on the moon would themselves weigh several tons. That's not just a small penalty, it's a sacrifice that could mean the difference between landing a full crew and leaving science gear behind. SpaceX's approach has always been to question every assumption, especially when it comes to mass. On Earth, the company eliminated landing legs for booster recovery by building a giant launch tower, Mechazilla, that catches Falcon 9 and Starship as they return. That move saved tons of hardware and simplified the rocket itself. The logic is simple, if a part isn't absolutely necessary, it doesn't fly. On the moon, the same philosophy collides with a different set of challenges. There's no atmosphere, no tower, and the lunar surface offers no forgiveness. Still, the temptation to delete legs is strong. Every ton saved could mean more water, more oxygen, more tools for astronauts. In the relentless drive for efficiency, even the most radical ideas get serious consideration if they promise to trim mass from the manifest. Odysseus, a commercial lunar lander from Intuitive Machines, made headlines in February 2024 by becoming the first American-built spacecraft to touch down on the moon in over half a century. But the celebration didn't last. During its final descent, Odysseus carried just a bit too much sideways speed. One of its legs caught on the surface, and the whole vehicle tipped, coming to rest at a steep angle. Solar panels and communication antennas pointed the wrong way, limiting power and cutting off much of its ability to send data home. What was meant to be a showcase of new lunar technology ended up as a cautionary tale about how little margin for error exists on the moon. Japan's Slim Lander faced its own struggle just a month earlier. Slim was designed for precision, with advanced navigation to hit a pinpoint landing site. But as it neared the surface, one of its engines lost thrust. The craft drifted forward and landed nose down, its solar panels facing away from the sun. For days, the team waited for sunlight to shift, hoping the lander would wake up. When power finally returned, Slim managed to send back science data, but its mission was cut short by the awkward, inverted position. These failures weren't the result of catastrophic hardware explosions or dramatic crashes. They were the outcome of small errors, slight horizontal motions, a missed sensor reading, a foot catching a rock. On the moon, even a gentle tip means antennas and solar panels can't do their jobs, and a spacecraft's lifespan shrinks to just a few hours or days. For Starship, which is orders of magnitude taller and heavier, the consequences of a tip-over would be far more severe. The lesson is clear. Stability isn't a luxury. It's the difference between a thriving outpost and a silent, powerless hulk stranded in the lunar dust. Stability for a lunar lander starts with a simple question. Will it stay upright, or will it tip? The answer depends on two different kinds of stability, 
Static and dynamic. Static stability is the easy one to picture. Imagine a spacecraft sitting perfectly still on the moon. If you tilt it slowly, it will stay standing until its center of gravity moves past the edge of its footprint. At that point, gravity takes over and the vehicle falls. The maximum tilt angle before tipping is surprisingly the same on Earth and the Moon, because gravity cancels out in the math. That's why tall, narrow landers are always at risk, no matter the world. Dynamic stability is where things get more complicated. When a lander touches down with any sideways motion, what engineers call lateral velocity, it's not just sitting anymore. Even a small horizontal speed can create a tipping moment, especially if the vehicle is tall or the legs are close together. On the moon, this problem gets worse. The weaker gravity means the restoring force that tries to keep the lander upright is much smaller, while the momentum from even a gentle drift is just as strong as on Earth. To compensate, Lunar landers need legs that are about two and a half times wider than what would suffice on Earth for the same mass and height. That's the so-called 2.5 times rule. For a squat lander, this might be manageable, but as vehicles get taller, the required base grows fast. The difference between a safe landing and a tip-over isn't just about careful piloting. It's built into the geometry and physics of the vehicle itself. Starship stands over 50 meters tall, about as high as a 16-story building. That sheer height, paired with a narrow base, creates a stability crisis unlike anything faced by earlier lunar landers. The center of gravity sits nearly 20 meters above the ground, so even a slight tilt or a bit of sideways motion at touchdown can spell disaster. For smaller craft like Odysseus or Slim, the allowable horizontal drift at landing was already tiny, less than one meter per second. But for Starship, the margin shrinks even further. Calculations show that to avoid tipping, Starship must touch down with almost zero lateral velocity, less than 0.3 meters per second. That's walking speed, and the guidance system has to achieve that precision with a vehicle weighing over 100 tons. The problem multiplies on rough ground. The moon isn't a parking lot. It's a landscape of craters, rocks, and loose dust. If the surface under one edge of Starship is just a few degrees off level, the tipping moment grows rapidly. The taller the vehicle, the smaller the safe zone becomes. Engineers use a simple ratio. The wider the base compared to the height of the center of gravity, the more forgiving the lander. For Starship, unless the legs, or whatever support structure is used, spread far wider than the main body, the risk of toppling remains ever-present. This isn't just a design headache, it's a mission-ending threat. The physics don't care about ambition. If the numbers don't add up, the moon will tip Starship over without a second thought. The idea of landing Starship horizontally on the moon upends decades of tradition, but it's not without appeal. By resting on its side, Starship could lower its center of gravity, making it much harder to tip over on uneven ground. Ground-level hatches would let astronauts walk straight out, and cargo could be unloaded without cranes or long ladders. This orientation even opens the door to burying part of the hull in lunar regolith using the moon's own dust as a shield against radiation. For engineers chasing every possible advantage in safety and efficiency, the horizontal concept offers a tantalizing set of benefits, if it can be made to work. Starship's steel hull is engineered for vertical loads. Every ascent, every landing, channels force straight up through the engine skirt and thrust structure. Turning the vehicle sideways changes everything. Now, the cylindrical body faces bending stress across its length, not just compression from above. The skirt, built to handle rocket thrust, would have to absorb the shock of hard, uneven lunar terrain and the full weight of the vehicle pressing sideways. Engine plumes, instead of clearing beneath landing legs, would blast regolith directly against the skirt, risking erosion and thermal damage. Inside, 
Fuel tanks designed for upright operations could let propellant slosh unpredictably, shifting the center of gravity just as the vehicle needs perfect balance. For every advantage in stability, the horizontal concept demands a complete rethink of structural strength, thermal protection, and mass distribution, none of it proven for a spacecraft this size. NASA's Artemis III mission is racing toward a 2027 deadline, and certification demands a solution that works the first time. With lunar catch towers decades away, SpaceX will equip the first Starship human landing system with single-use landing legs. A practical answer shaped by urgency, not just ambition. As of 2024, SpaceX's Starship stands over 50 meters tall, and every kilogram saved from landing hardware could enable more cargo or crew on the moon. Yet recent lunar missions, including the 2024 Odysseus lander, have shown how quickly low gravity and uneven terrain can turn innovation into disaster, reminding engineers that stability is non-negotiable. While SpaceX's team has explored bold alternatives, like landing on the engine skirt or even resting Starship on its side, current evidence highlights unsolved issues, structural stresses, plume erosion, and the lack of lunar infrastructure. NASA's Artemis III mission, targeting 2027, will require Starship HLS to use single-use landing legs, a practical answer driven by physics and schedule. Whether future missions will see legless landings or lunar catch towers remains unknown. For now, every design choice is a balance between speed, efficiency, and safety. The record shows that every leap in spaceflight begins with questions others are afraid to ask, but progress depends on what the evidence allows, one iteration at a time.